Oh, hey there. Can we please talk about what happened at UFC Vegas 49? Uh, also, I'm going to be looking at, uh, at news from around uh, the combat sports world. There's been certain people that have been arrested for shooting certain people. That's literally happened. Quite a big story. Anyway, uh, there's there's you know fighters uh, falling out of co-main events and being replaced and being replaced again. And who can keep track these days of who is fighting who when so many fights just change on a whim, it seems. So... If you're new to this, basically what I like to do, I like to play some terrible bets all across like the UFC and mixed martial arts. And this is the point where I'll go through them and we'll have a good laugh at how, how ridiculously terrible they were. And they usually are. I'm, I have a terrible success rate, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? And also, you know, I'm going to have a look at the news, have a bit of a laugh at what people have been, been doing. Uh, if that sounds good, stay with me for The Burt Locker episode 108. <laughs> So, recap of UFC Vegas 49. Now, Josiah, Josiane Nunes, uh, she was she was vicious, man. I did ha I picked her to get a second round finish, and actually, this was that that wasn't a bad pick. I think I got like seven and a half to one on that, which was which is pretty good considering how close she came. Obviously, terrible bet, didn't end up happening, went to a decision, but. She was really close to getting that finish in the second round. I, I really, I, I, th I was already counting my money, guys. I was already counting my money. But uh, yeah, then, um, you know, fair play to her opponent, Pasquale, as I think her name was. She managed to last out. But Nunes is vicious. And I am really looking forward to seeing where she goes, to be fair, because I think she was fighting at featherweight there. She has no business being at featherweight. She's five foot two. She's small, right? But she still beat the crap out of a, a natural featherweight. Nunes, she's a bantamweight. And I think she's going to do damage. She, She's just, she's one to watch. Like, she's she's not Amanda Nunes. She's Josiane Nunes. Jo Josiane Nunes? Josiane. Josiane? Josiane? I don't know how, how you'd say it. Either way, she's a goddamn beast. And it was fun to watch her. Terman, fair play to him, man. I thought that that was a fun fight. Kirkinov versus Terman was actually pretty funny because what happened was in the in the first round, I had Kirkinov by decision in that one, by the way. And um, in the first round, uh, Terman got his back and rode him like a backpack for a long time, and it looked like he was almost getting the submission. He cranked on his jaw. It was really, really tight and nasty. And then Serkinov managed to get out of it, threw him down to the ground. And then it was like, now Serkinov's mad because you nearly, do you know, because you just cranked on his jaw. And yeah, he was throwing some bombs like on the floor. Go back and watch the fight. It was really entertaining, actually, because it was just like, oh shit, Serkinov's mad now. And he just started raining down blows and just like, and I, I gave him that first round, honestly, based on that, because he, he, because he started beating the fuck out of Terman, like real bad. And then, Second round, uh, it was just so quick. It was one of the quickest arm bars that I've ever seen. He just he just got it on, and Serkinov knew it was on, and just tapped straight away. And it was just like, well, okay, Terman, Terman, congratulations, buddy. That was it. Terman. Terman is is a beast. Like to be fair, he he is so good at submissions. But Serkinov is really slick with his submissions as well. So to to get a submission to him, that is not bad at all. And is that Makachev? Look, uh, this was. It was a it was a foregone conclusion, really. Obviously, you know, I bet on Bobby Green, but not because I thought he was going to win. I wanted Bobby Green to win, really, but because look, people keep on going on that Makachev, like, isn't boring. And it's like problem is he is a little bit. Let, let, let's let's all be fair here, right? It's not that Makachev's boring. Makachev has one job, and that's to go in there and win. Fair play to him. He goes in there and he does it, right? But it's his dominance that is going to become very, very boring. Do you know what I mean? The fact that you, there is no jeopardy, is there? There's no jeopardy because what's he, he's just going to go in there and take his opponent down, get a first round TKO or submission, which is impressive. It's really impressive. And people keep going, coming back and saying, oh, how can a first round TKO be boring? It's like, it's because it's hardly like Anderson Silva in his prime, is it? When you, when part of the jeopardy, you, you, were, you were fairly sure that Anderson Silva was going to win. But part of the jeopardy was what crazy Bruce Lee cross kick he was going to come out with. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Makachev's style is far safer than that. It's takedown. It's stay at kicking range. 
throw some kicks. His, his kicks are good as well. And his striking's not bad either. But he will get that takedown. He will then beat on them until they either present the submission or he gets a TKO. And it's impressive, but unspectacular. And especially when you know exactly, you know he's going through those motions. You know that's exactly what he's going to do, right? So I'm not saying that Makachev's boring, but that kind of dominance, and especially when it's not flashy dominance could become an issue when it comes to selling pay-per-views. However, I would say that Makachev has a huge Muslim following, uh, especially, you know, over in Russia and that. They're going to make a bunch of... when they Because what they'll do is they'll, if he wins the title, they'll just have him fighting in Abu Dhabi and they'll make an absolute mint from it. So it's no problem for the UFC or for Makachev. He's still going to make, like, an absolute buttload of money. He doesn't have to do anything different. It's up to somebody else to come along and try and find a counter to that style. But I don't know what the counter to that style is. We we haven't really seen it yet, have we? It's just, I mean, I know that um, uh, Martinez, uh, yeah, knocked knocked Makachev out. But I don't know. He seems to have tightened up his game a lot since then. And if anything, it's made him safer. And yeah, like I said, it it's not so it's not so much that Makachev's boring, but that kind of dominance is going to get pretty tedious. You know, you need jeopardy. Like for fights, it, they, they had the same problem with Tyson back in the day. Do you know? And they they started gi giving people their money back if the fight didn't last three rounds. Do you know? It could, because it was so dominant that that became boring. Because it's like, well, like there's this the guy that they're putting him putting him against has got no chance. There's there's no jeopardy here. You need jeopardy to sell a fight. And anyway, so before I go into the news, I just want to say thank you all for watching and if you could like and subscribe please that would mean the world to me it'd be brilliant i also have a patreon as well if you want to show some extra support literally it's one pound a month you do get early access to the fight picks and there are some extra content that's going to be going on there as well but like i said for one pound a month it just helps me kind of make the show a little bit better i'm going to look at trying to get some fighter interviews and things like that if you're into that sort of thing and uh yeah but other than that if you could like and subscribe or just tell your friends like if you listen to this as an audio podcast just tell your friends like you know I, I i listen to this podcast and i think it's pretty good i think you get something out of it and then what do they lose like 10 15 minutes of their lives if they don't like it they don't like it it's fine but if you could just you know let some people know word of mouth is always good but anyway but your support is appreciated so the biggest thing in the news you've got to have seen it is kane velasquez has been arrested for shooting somebody. Now, he was arrested on Monday. He is currently being charged with attempted murder. He does. He did have a preliminary court date set for today. I haven't seen the... Um I haven't seen the actual result of that yet, but there has been some more information that's come out on it. Now, it turns out... That it's weird, right? Because a lot of the articles I've been reading, it turns out that they're saying it wasn't premeditated, but it just so happens the person he was shooting at is accused of abusing children at Velasquez's daycare and one of the children in question was a direct relative of Mr. Velasquez. Now, that to me says that that probably was premeditated then because what, what are the odds of that? The odds of like him just getting into a road rage incident and it just so happens that it was that guy in the car. They're trying to say it wasn't premeditated or it was? Because... Uh, if it was that guy, then I would say that sounds premeditated to me. It sounds like Velasquez was very, very angry, rightfully so. But I would say, like I said, you know, he also missed the intended target. It, he pulled the gun and he shot at the guy that is alleged, that is accused of these abuses, but he missed and hit somebody who has not been accused of anything, the stepfather of the, the guy. So that's a big problem. That is far from ideal, isn't it? I mean, because a lot of people are obviously jumping to Velasquez's defence, and rightfully so. Look, when there are children involved, it's a very kind of emotional situation, because obviously any abuse towards children is awful. Blanket statement. Awful. But I would say that even the person in question that Velasquez was shooting at, these are accusations at this point. There's nothing, he hasn't been to court, so I've been doing a lot of reading into it, and from what I can see, the guy hasn't been charged, and he hasn't been to court. So, these are, he's been accused at this point. So, in a way, 
Velasquez had better hope that he was doing the things that he's been accused of because otherwise he's got no leg to stand on. Unfortunately, he probably doesn't have a leg to stand on anyway because he missed and he shot somebody who is not accused of anything. Literally, that person's only crime was sitting in the same car as this person and being the guy's stepfather. And not being funny, but that's not a crime in and of itself, is it? You know, it's, it, so, yeah, this is a real problem for Cain Velasquez. He is going to face some serious jail time here because of the fact he missed and he shot the wrong person who looks like, they, with respect, they didn't have anything to do with what is being alleged of the other gentleman in the car that he was shooting at. So, yeah, it's a, it's a mess, quite frankly. It's a mess and it's sad. And, you know, what can you say? You can't say anything else, can you? It's a, it's a complete mess and it is, it is really sad. And that is why, you know, is yeah, I get it. You know, he had every right to be angry if, if what is being alleged is true. He had every right to be angry, but it just shows that you should, you probably shouldn't go off half cocked. Pardon the pun. Sorry, it's not a time for puns, is it? But yeah, you go off half cocked and you pull out a gun and you shoot at the person that's supposedly done these things, but miss and hit somebody who has not been accused of anything. Yeah, you, you're going to do some jail time for that. And I would say rightfully so as well, because I mean, the stepfather didn't seem to have anything to do with it. But again, I wasn't at the incident. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe there was an argument or whatever. But uh, all you can do is wish them all the best, really. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure Kane's going to jail just fine if it's any consolation. Don't think too many people are fucking around with Kane Velasquez in jail. Not being funny. I don't think that ends well for most people. But anyway, more on that as it develops. So, oh, really looking forward to the fights this week, especially the co-main event where you've got... Rafael de Sanos taking on Rafael Fiziev. No, wait. Islam Makachev is stepping in at short note. No, wait. It is now Renato Moicano. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, as soon as uh, Fiziev fell out of that co-main event, I was a little bit like, uh, I don't really care who they get to replace him now. I, I was more uh, I was more on the Fazeev bandwagon. I'm a big fan of Rafael Fazeev, and I wanted to see if he could get that feather in his cap of beating Rafael de Sanos. That's what they... Rafael de Sanos' nickname at this point should be Feather in the Cap, because that's more or less what he is for a lot of these guys coming up. That's what he's being used as. You know, no, no disrespect. Like, Rafael de Sanos at one time was the man, and he, he won the belt, and he's fucking awesome. However... He is not getting any younger. What is he, like 37 now? 39 maybe? I don't know. But either way, he's no spring chicken anymore. Uh, I don't think... Uh, I, I, actually, I don't think he, I don't think Moicano is a terrible matchup for him. Makachev would have been a horrible matchup for him. Again, no jeopardy there. I think Makachev would have just steamrolled him. But So Moicano is probably a better shout. I don't know. I'll have a look at the odds and I'll figure out who I'm going to bet on in that one. But, I mean, let's be fair. There, there are a lot of fights on that um, on that card. You've got Alex Oliveira is fighting somebody who's pretty good. Oh, I can't remember who the fuck he's fighting. But Alex Oliveira is fighting somebody. You've got um, Greg Hardy against uh, the Polar Bear, um, Sergei Spivak. And who else is there? There's another fight. That I'm really oh yeah, Bryce Mitchell's fighting Edson Barboza, any? That's a decent card. I'll be doing my breakdown of that on Friday. So um, well, Friday for the Patreon, Saturday for everybody else. Uh, but I thank you all, thank all of you for watching. Anyway, uh, yeah, for me, I don't know. I, that might actually be a matchup that DeSandros can win. I don't think Makachev. I think he's kind of lucky Makachev decided he didn't want to do it at 170. If I'm totally honest, I don't think that's a good fight for uh, RDA. And um, yeah, so then we'll just get into troll of the week. So troll of the week this week, there are there, <laughs> these are good boys. We've got we've got a brilliant John Jones one, right? It's um, basically because obviously you've got uh, Covington against uh, Masvidal is going to play this weekend, and they there's former sparring partners that fell out with each other. So now you've got a picture of. Covington and Masvidal on one side, and it says spying partners who went their separate ways. And then it's got a picture of John Jones and his fiance. <laughs> that, that shit is fucking hilarious. Because obviously, you know, as we all know, John Jones is um is a garbage man and 
beats up his fiance or former fiance I should say because he did some sort of pity post the other the other week saying oh she said that she's not coming back uh, all those John Jones haters out there have yourself a drink have a to- have a toast or something because because I feel like shit right now so like, don't throw yourself a pity party John you beat her up and then went mental that fit accountability John Jesus like, don't expect people to feel sorry for you at this point, for God's sake. Yeah, she should, she's done the right thing. She should have left. You shouldn't be putting, like, you are a trained MMA fighter. You should not be putting your hands on fiance. Jesus Christ, John. The fact that that's even a question in your mind makes me think that you've been in the fight game too long, honestly. The CTE is real. Jesus Christ. But, yeah, so, there you've got Islam Makachev. Obviously, this one made more sense when Makachev was staying in Vegas to fight Rafael de Santos. But basically, it's just got the uh, the guy who, you know, he's, he's got the plan. It's like, can't get drafted into war if I don't leave Vegas. Honestly, I think Makachev would be fine in war. I think, oh, it's cool. God, he, that'd be scary to come across his like Makachev if you're in a war. I mean, I'd definitely want a gun. To be fair, I don't think there's any other way most folk are dealing with Islam Makachev. And if Islam Makachev's got a gun as well, then good luck to you. And then he got the last one. Uh, basically, he's making fun of corner. He's like, when your corner is just a bunch of your drunk buddies, right? Because I didn't notice this. When, when Tony Ferguson was fighting Justin Gaethje, he was getting the absolute snot beaten out of him. And, like, and I think it was between rounds, Eddie Bravo just goes, hey... You got to try the Iminyari roll. It's like, you are out of your fucking mind. That's what you got? Jesus Christ. Throw in the towel. Get him out of there. Give him some fundamental advice. Don't tell him to go for a fu- for something that sounds like you- something you'd order in a sushi restaurant. No, I know what I know the role he's talking about. He's meaning like to roll to the leg to get a leg lock. But I guess it's a, I guess at that point he was right. It's a desperation move, and I love Eddie Bravo. I, I, want, I just want to make that clear. I just thought it was really funny, and I saw this meme, and I was like, yeah, that's basically what I thought at the time when I heard him going, hey, because hey, uh, Tony Ferguson wasn't even hearing them. He couldn't hear any word they were saying. All he could hear was the, the amount he had been hit in the head at that point. I imagine he could just see Eddie Bravo's lips moving, and all he could hear was he, because he's just been smashed in the head. So and Eddie Bravo is just like, hey, try an Iminyari roll, dude. You got him. It's like, come on, man, come on. But either way. Look forward to seeing uh, Tony Ferguson come back. I don't know who he's going to be fighting, but I'm sure we'll get that announced soon. But anyway, that is all I've got time for today. Uh, I'll be doing my picks for this week's fights on the Friday on the Patreon, Saturday on uh, YouTube. And until next time, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.